Hey everyone, it's Mike Mullis here at the Original Next Level Gaming. And look what I've got. It's a cardboard box. And uh, I want to see what's inside. Want to take a look with me? Of course you do. You clicked on the video. So let's do it. All right, so you already know what it is that's inside this box because, well, of course, you clicked on the video. You clicked on the video based on what the name of the video was. So you already know that this is an Atari VCS. I want to, before I get it out and before we crack it open, I want to give a huge, huge shout out and a very, very huge thank you to a great friend great friend of the channel, TV's Hasselhoff. So Hasselhoff came to me uh, a few days back and said, hey, you were talking about the Atari VCS over on DJC Game Studios' channel uh, in chat during one of the Amico Forevers, and I happened to have one that I got on that $99 fire sale that they were putting out uh, about a month ago. Uh, I tried to get one. It was already sold out. He had an extra one. He said, I'm not using it. I'll sell it to you. And so I met up with him on Saturday. And uh, here it is. Aha. So we are going to take it out of the box. I'm going to get it hooked up. We're going to see what's inside. And then I'm going to try this thing out. I did not really have an appetite for the Atari VCS, right? I, to me, it was just, you know, exactly what it's boiled down to be, which is just a little mini computer. But I do a lot of emulating. Now, I own a lot of retro games, and I don't own the older systems for them. The Sega CD, the Sega Genesis, the 32X. Uh, I don't have a good working PlayStation 2. I don't have a good working PlayStation 1. So I had been emulating games on my Xbox One. And I can emulate almost everything up to PS2. And from what I understand, RetroArch runs on an Atari VCS very well. That's the main purpose of my getting this. So when this fell into my lap, I had to jump on it. So once again, to TV's Hasselhoff, thank you so much. This, I'm hoping, is everything that I wanted it to be. So, I'm gonna open this up real quick and let's see what's inside. All right. All right, we've got our packing material. And here it is. Box down. One Atari VCS. This is the VCS 800 Onyx Bundle. So this has the console, the wireless modern controller, and then the wireless classic joystick. Let me take this out of the cellophane. And I'll show you the rest of the box. Now what I like about this is if you look at this, now you've probably seen a video or two about the VCS. But for those of you who follow NLG that have never seen this before, and there are some of you because you know we cover modern stuff, this is semi-modern. The Atari VCS has that old school Atari and old school VCS uh, logo on it. Turning the box around, an icon reimagined, includes a 30 day free trial subscription to Anstream Arcade. And we're gonna check out Anstream Arcade in one of our upcoming videos as I do a little bit more about the Atari VCS. So I wanna get this thing unboxed and uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what's inside, getting it hooked up and uh, just seeing what it's about. So uh, here we go, let's get it out of the box.
Okay, so let's take a closer look at the hardware itself. Now, one of the things that I noticed as I was pulling it out of the box and pulling out all the accessories was the build quality. Now, keep in mind that when the Atari VCS first launched, this console, the base unit alone, was $299. With the accessories, was $399. So this was a $400 game system if you got everything that came in this box. One thing that I noticed, and let's start with the console itself. Now it's hard to see it from here on, on camera, but the, the console itself has some weight to it. So it feels okay. It's all plastic and it feels sort of like a cheaper plastic than you'd get on definitely on the PS5 or the Xbox Series X. Um, it, it was, it, it feels kind of, I'm not going to say flimsy because that's not the right word, but it feels kind of like, uh, almost like a toy. Now, of course, there's a Ryzen processor in here, so the system's not a toy, but it just feels that way. What I will say that I do like is that on the front, there are a couple of USB ports, so you have one that's on each side, and you have two on the back. And then also on the back is, and I'll bring it up here, so you have your two USB, you have your HDMI, you have an Ethernet cable, and you have your power. Now, interestingly enough, your power button's on the back. That's a little different than what I'm used to. You know, these modern consoles, all your power buttons are on the front. Even on the original Atari 2600, the power was a flip switch on the front. This is one of the first times that I've seen a power button on a console, on a, on any console that I can remember being on the back of the system. That's a little weird, but it that's not going to make much of a difference. Just pointing it out. What struck me as, however, more... I don't know if concerning is the is the word I want to use or just off is the quality of the joysticks. So this is the classic joystick, all right? So as you see, it's got a single stick in the middle and it has a single button here. It also has a single button here. And then it has your USB input. And then there's a couple buttons down at the bottom, a menu button and what looks like a back button. Up in the upper right corner is an Atari button, and I'm assuming that that is the button that would turn the joystick on and pair it to your console. But it's this is a lot flimsier. Like, this feels like I could break this if I'm in a very, very um, intense gaming session. Um, the stick in the middle doesn't have the same type of play that the original 2600 stick did. I don't have an original 2600 stick to use for comparison for you today, but from what I remember as a kid, this is a little more, this feels a little more like it's trying to be a digital stick in an, anal, you know, in an analog form. Now it does rotate all the way around, so it's not just left, right, up, down. It does feel like you can do diagonals. Um, the stick itself spins, but I don't think that's going to do anything. Uh, I think that's just for... I, I'm not sure what that's for, but we'll see once we get it rolling uh, how well this stick actually works. The other gamepad that came with it, of course, is the modern controller. This, let's be honest, what does it look like to you? Uh-huh, looks like an Xbox controller not saying that's a bad thing the xbox controller well this looks a lot more like an xbox series x and s controller than anything else that's not a bad thing because these are highly comfortable uh the xbox controller is still one of my favorite controllers to hold for long gaming sessions much like the xbox controller and as i showed you before you have two analog sticks right here they feel just fine. They do click in just like the Xbox controller and the PS5 controller, of course. Um, and on top, you have uh, shoulder buttons and bumpers. And you have A, X, Y, uh, B, and Y. 
And what looks exactly like the Xbox controller, you have the Atari button in the middle and you have two menu buttons on the side. The D-pad actually feels really nice. This, this is my preferred D-pad to more of the, the cross style D-pad because this I can roll my finger across and it feels really good. I will say that holding this, holding this gives me, um, you know, a nice feel, a nice, this feels like a better build quality, although still very plasticky, um, not as, not as heavy a, a build as an Xbox controller, but still feels really good in my hand. And of course there's the USB input for charging. One thing that I also found interesting is while these are very long cables, and uh, I'm assuming that is for folks that need to, you know, you can play while you charge, of course. You need a little length, but these are not USB-C cables. Atari chose to go with the old school, I guess it's old school now, but um, an older USB micro standard. I'm interested um, in finding out why that is. I don't think that's a necessarily a big deal. And I do have charging cables over on my charging desk that are micro. So I don't need these necessarily, although I do like the length. Um, so they do fit very nicely into the controller. I will say that they go right in and they don't just go flush. They go into the compartment area. So there, you know, the USB uh, input on this controller is recessed in. The USB port on the classic controller is also a little recessed in. And it also, the cable fits in there quite nicely. Nice and snug. And that's a good fit. Okay. So we've gotten through opening it and I've shown you the hardware. Now comes the real test. I'm going to go hook it up and we're going to go check it out see what it's like. And there you go, the Atari VCS is plugged in and ready to go. We're gonna go ahead and turn on the power. And in just a second, we'll see the Atari logo light up. And that means it's booting up and getting ready. So we're gonna go through the initial setup. We see a little asteroids action and then the Atari logo pop up on the screen. Then it's gonna ask us to connect one of our joysticks. I'm gonna go ahead and use the classic controller for this. I'm gonna hold down the Atari button until it pairs with the console. And then you see it pop up. It's gonna show me all of the buttons and all of the functions of the joystick. Hit the button and it's gonna take me into my initial setup. First, I'm gonna pick a language. So I'll just stick with English. And then it's gonna ask me to find my wireless. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick my 5G wireless. If I wanted to connect a ethernet cable, I would do that as well. But for now, we're just gonna to connect to my wireless. Now it's update time. It's gonna take about 10 minutes and it's gonna run through all the necessary updates and all the current updates for the console, including flashing the BIOS to its latest version. Once that's done, it comes back to asking me to either select a guest account or sign in with an existing account or create a new one. I'm gonna go ahead and create a new one since I haven't logged into Atari before. It's gonna ask me to pick an icon and it's got a bunch to choose from, but I saw an Atari 800 computer. That was my old computer from my youth. So I'm gonna go ahead and pick that. It's gonna ask me for my display name. So I'm gonna go ahead and put, I'm gonna use the same name I use on Twitter. Now it's gonna ask me for an email account. Anybody who needs to email me, you're welcome to do so at this email address. Then it's gonna ask me for a pin. 
Now, obviously, I'm not going to tell you what that is, but I'm going to put it in, and then it's going to ask me to verify it. And once I get it verified, then it's going to ask me for my birthday. So I'm going to go ahead and put this in. My birthday is not really a secret. I just don't talk about it much. That's why you don't see it on Twitter or anything like that. But this is my birthday. I'm 48 years old. It's fine. This allows me to add a bio. I'm not going to do that right now, but later on I could go back and add all the nice things I'd like to say about myself. Now it's going to ask me for a final review, make sure all of my information is correct, and then send me a verification email to my NL Gaming account. I'm going to go ahead and verify, click finish, and now it's going to set up my dashboard. Once my dashboard is in place, this is the starter stuff that comes on the VCS. So let's just take a look around and see what we've got. Now on the front screen, you see a VCS companion, which is a phone app, Chrome, the Atari VCS Vault, and Anstream Arcade. Clicking on the right hand side, I can see my account. I can switch users. I can power down or put it into standby mode. Going back to the settings under system, here's all my account information. Under the general settings, I see where I can change the display resolution. I'm going to go ahead and put this into 4K mode. It's going to reboot once I click continue. Once it's rebooted, I'm going to sign back in as me. I can sign in as a guest if I don't want to sign in as anybody. But for now, let's go ahead and sign back in as my account. I have to put my pin in. In the settings, I could turn this off. And I did later on. Under the general settings, once again, we have our resolution. We can name our VCS under the preferences. We can set a sleep time. We can change uh, what joysticks are hooked up. And if we click on this, it shows us our button schemes. We have our system updates. So if we want to check for updates here, we can. Both things are up to date, of course. And if we need to do a factory reset, we could do so. Under the network tab, we could show our Wi-Fi status and connect to another Wi-Fi if we want. Under the devices tab, we could turn the Bluetooth on and off. We can see what joysticks or game pads are connected to the console, and we can update them. Now, these updates require you to plug the joystick into the console. So we are not going to do that right here, but this is where you would update your controllers. Under storage, this shows us everything that's installed on the system. You can see DOSBox and Stella and MAME on here. Interesting. So, we're going to go to Chrome. This does have a fully functional working Google Chrome browser. And when I say fully functional, I'm going to show you. So let's go to uh, our YouTube channel. There's the NL Gaming channel. Let's go over to the Gamers United Guild website. And there's our Gamers United Guild site, where you can find all of our great Gamers United Guild folks. Let's take it a step further. Let's go to the Xbox Cloud Gaming page. There we go. Let's click on Fortnite. We're not going to play Fortnite, but we're going to go ahead and click on it. Let's click play. Now it's going to ask me, just like I would on a PC, to sign in. I'm going to go ahead and sign into my Microsoft account real quick. And once I'm signed in, it's going to take me back to the Cloud gaming site and let's try it now I don't have the right joystick hooked up this really needs the modern controller but I just want to see if it launches well, there you go streaming Fortnite so obviously we can't do it because again I need the modern controller hooked up but just to show you that the Xbox Cloud Gaming does work natively on the VCS. So we're going to exit out. We're going to go back to the dashboard. Now looking across the top, there are 
sections for everything you need. The next section over is the game section. So as we download and buy games, they're gonna be listed here. Right now, we just have the Anstream Arcade and Atari VCS. Going to the app side, in the middle, we have PC mode. You can connect an external drive or you can install an M2 SSD drive inside your VCS and boot into whatever operating system you like. And we're gonna show you that in an upcoming video. So coming back out, let's go to the store and take a look around. So the store is curated into a featured section, a game section, and an app section. And if you look across the apps, you're gonna see all your familiar Google apps, of course. However, as we saw with Google Chrome, you can launch Microsoft apps right in the browser. Looking across the game section, there are 2,600 games, 7,800 games. There's indie games. There's all kinds of stuff to play. And the prices are not too bad. We're going to try some of these out in a future video. So scrolling down and taking a look. We'll load some more here. There are some other native apps too. The Luna app, uh, the NVIDIA uh, GeForce Now, Xbox Cloud Gaming. So you could do all of your streaming right from this console without ever having to boot into another operating system. There's a Stadia app and there's an Air Console app. So the store is pretty easy to navigate. And finally, let's go to the friends area. So here's my Atari VCS name, NLG Mullis 12896. Feel free to add me and let's share leaderboards and such. And that's the initial setup of the Atari VCS. I'm ready to rock and roll. All right, so we got it unboxed, we got it hooked up, we got it fired up, and we got it set up. Now, one other thing that I wanted to point out, while I was running through working with the classic controller, I did get a chance to fire up the Atari VCS Vault, and because I wanted to try it out, earlier in the video, I said that I wasn't sure why the joystick spun, whether or not it was a spinner, like a spinner control from the arcade, or if it just did that just because. Turns out, it's a spinner. So, and I'll show this in a future video, I fired up Tempest, and sure enough, I could spin the stick, and it spun the little guy around the play field. I also fired up Super Breakout, and it worked there too. So, I'm looking forward to seeing some of the other games that use this classic controller and the spinner. I also wanted to let you know that these controllers, both the Classic Controller and the Pro Controller, both connect via Bluetooth to a PC. So yes, I can use this on my PC version of RetroArch. The only thing I haven't tried yet that I'm very curious about is if I could plug it in via USB to my OG Xbox One and play the RetroArch on that with one of these. Not sure. Not sure it matters, but this is cool to plug into your own computer if you want to use it. All right, so in future videos, again, we're going to fire up the VCS vault. We're going to check out some of the stuff in the store, and I'm going to load an OS into PC mode. We're getting RetroArch running on that Atari VCS. We're going to do it, and we're going to see how it actually plays. Okay, so that's going to do it for this video. In future episodes, I'm going to check out the VCS store and download some stuff and try it out. We're going to go through the VCS vault and I'm going to put this thing in PC mode. I'm going to load an operating system on it and one way or another, I'm going to try RetroArch on that VCS. Stay with me, folks. I've got more VCS videos to come. Now, speaking of which, if you like these videos, of course, you can go right to the NLG channel, click the original NLG below, check out some of our other great coverage, 
There's a lot of other NLG spotlights here. We have our NLG show with myself, Peter Hutink, and Chris Williams, as well as other live streams and things of that nature. We are going to do some VCS live streams as well, just so you know. Click the subscribe button, hit that like button, share this out, leave a comment. All those things really do help our channel. And if you like everything that you're seeing, we'd love for you to be part of our family. So please hit the like, hit the subscribe, share it out. And thank you so much for being here. Thank you so much for supporting us here at the original Next Level Gaming. And until next time, always say, play on gamers.